We'll refer you to the Budapest criteria slide here. Um, some of the key points that I want to make sure that you understand from the Budapest criteria is number one, it says that patients must have pain that's disproportionate to the inciting event or to the injury. So that's one of the biggest hallmarks, and, and really we do see that with CRPS um, across the board, 100% of the time, right? Pain that's out of proportion with the degree of the injury. But in addition to that, patients must show at least one of the following signs. Uh, number one, they must have sensory hyperesthesia. So that means that when you touch them, uh, uh, light sensory touch, their pain is again out of proportion with what their pain should be with that touch. And in many situations, they shouldn't have any pain with that touch. Uh, when, they ha when they're supposed to have no pain with that touch and they have pain, that's called allodynia. Number two, the patients must have some type of vasomotor changes. So that includes uh, vascular changes, decreased blood flow, uh, which is hallmarked with temperature changes and or color changes. So you'll see uh, an extremity that might look red or blue or purple, or you might see an extremity that has um, um, a large temperature difference, at least one degree Celsius in temperature difference. Now, you might uh, uh, also see um, uh, what we call pseudomotor changes, so that might be things like sweating, okay, or edema, where they're getting more uh, swelling or uh, areas of their body are, are, are moist or sweating more. And then finally, you may see motor changes, so decreased motor function, uh, weakness, tremors, dystonia. Uh, you may see things like hair, skin, or nails changing, hair falling out, or hair not growing, skin looking a lot more scaly, um, not really looking as healthy. I've seen even patients where their nails are falling out. Well, again, here's where some of that criteria becomes a little more complex. Uh, what about those patients who have those, uh, those pain changes but a lot of their symptoms are improving in terms of their visual symptoms are improving. Do they still have CRPS? That's been one challenge that we've had. Um, and the other challenge is what happens when you actually have CRPS that doesn't live in your extremities? And this is very real. We see this. We've seen CRPS, uh, probably the most common area we see it, that isn't well described and absolutely defies the Budapest criteria is the GI system.